Chris Watkins from Your Black World, and I wanted to uh, take one second to share something that um, I was talking to someone about today, and they brought this up, and I thought it would be a worthy conversation. Uh, they said, uh, you know, do you think that there's racism in the Bill Cosby uh, situation, in the way Bill Cosby's been kind of, you know, kind of instantly uh, demonized and really brought down in a way that I never would have ever expected in a million years? Um, and, uh, you know, in my first reaction, which is like a lot of people, uh, it depends on how you look at it, but I, I think Cosby probably did something wrong. He made a lot of bad decisions. Um, he should be held accountable for those decisions. There are a lot of questions I have. Um, I've always wondered, um, you know, how did a black man, a black man, a black man <laughs> get away with raping that many white women in the 60s and 70s and not be held accountable? But sometimes being wealthy and powerful can make a difference, um, you know, and uh, maybe that was a possibility. Maybe that's what was going on. Maybe some of the relationships were complicated. Um, it's hard to know, you know, why Why do some women keep taking money from Cosby afterward? Why do they keep dating him afterward? Why do they keep going to see him afterward? Um, you know, so those are questions that I think people have a right to answer. But at the same time, um, being stupid doesn't necessarily, or making a bad decision uh, as a woman doesn't mean that you deserve to be a rape victim. We know that too. Um, so... <clears throat> You know, do I think Cosby did something wrong? Well, I can certainly say with that many allegations, uh, it's hard to say no. Um, and then you have sort of the st the difference between what you know and what you can prove, and those are two different things. I think Whoopi Goldberg, Whoopi Goldberg's going further than I would go in terms of saying, you know, he hasn't. There's no physical evidence. He hasn't been um, convicted uh, or arrested or charged or tried or anything. Um, I think that that's true, but I think people are people have common sense and they know that if almost 40 people are accusing you of the same crime um you know it's it's it, and then you you know he's been he's buying those quaaludes for uh for women to give to them to have sex with them um it just it, it piles up a really interesting uh stack of circumstantial evidence that cannot be ignored now with that being said uh let's dig a little deeper somebody asked me um how much racism play how much rural racism plays in this and uh i think racism's everywhere in in Three, three situations that come to mind that make me uh, think about racism in America. One is Bill Cosby. The other is what happened with Tiger Woods five years ago. The last one was uh, the O.J. Simpson trial. Now, let's start off from the beginning. I never really liked any of those three guys that much. Um, I like Cosby the most just because um, I felt like he was at least trying to help the black community. He was doing things with his show that he didn't have to do. Um, the Cosby show was one of the best shows of all time in terms of what, not not just for being funny, but in terms of what it said about the black experience and about black people. Different world, amazing show. Increased the attendance of HBCUs. He gave tens of millions of dollars to HBCUs. You ain't seeing no other black celebrities out here doing none of that. Even the ones that are shaming Cosby, uh, they, they've never really stepped up to eight for HBCUs. So uh, if you're going to look at Cosby as a bad person or you know, a good person or whatever, you have to realize maybe he's a bad person who did good things or a good person who did bad things. He's one of those two things. He's not 100% of anything, in my opinion. Uh, OJ and Tiger, I admired them as, as, as being the greatest, among the greatest athletes of all time, but I didn't have any uh, appreciation for who they were as people. I kind of feel like they both just really walked away from the black community. I mean, almost abandoned the black community. And so I don't really care that much about these guys as people. I mean, it's like, whatever. Now, but here's the thing, though. In all three of those cases, racism was, was a huge factor. Um, because, you see, racism is what I would call an accelerator. Um, it doesn't mean that it's ever okay to be a rapist or potentially a murderer or, let's say, an adulterer who slept around with all these women Tiger slept with. You know, I felt like Tiger, what Tiger did was ridiculous. It was reckless. Sleeping with nine or ten porn stars and you're not even always protecting yourself. I mean, that's crazy to me. That shows he has some sort of mental issue. Um, but what was interesting to me was um it's always funny that when i see these situations where or at least in this case he was treated like a criminal like almost like he committed a crime because he committed they all have one thing they all have in common is they've all committed the heinous act of harming a white woman in every case and had they done the same thing to black women i don't think that the scrutiny would have been as great had they been white men doing that to white women, I don't think the scrutiny would have been as great. So, um, because we know uh, Tiger's not the first guy to cheat on his wife. Um, he's just the latest, or he was the latest at that moment. 
uh, we know that Cosby is not the only person in Hollywood buying Quaaludes. Quaaludes were big in Hollywood. They still are. They still buy that stuff. And they were buying them in the 60s and 70s like crazy. Uh, Hugh Hefner and people like that talk all the time about buying Quaaludes to give to women so they can have sex. I think Hugh Hefner called them thigh openers. I mean, what does that mean? You know, and so... Um, you know, and then and then I also read this article about in Hollywood these pedophile parties they would have, where these gay producers would get young boys and you know and treat them according to a lawsuit that one of the boys filed, treat them like pieces of meat. The the X Man director was involved in. Uh, he's a target of the lawsuit. Let's say that, uh, and a few other prominent people that could easily be splashed on the front pages of newspapers across the country, but it hasn't happened, right? Um, and now of course Cosby is above and beyond in terms of stardom. He was right there at the top of the pile, which made him, I think, a bigger, more interesting target for a lot of people, a wealthier target for sure. But um, at the same time, um, I can't think of too many times where a white guy has really been held in that same light for such, in such an impactful way um, you know, for doing something. The only the closest example I can think of is Joe Paterno with Penn State. I mean, Joe, you know, Penn State all but erased Joe Paterno's entire legacy because someone working for him uh, was molesting boys. Um, what Joe Paterno did was wrong. I'm still not quite sure if Joe should have been completely demonized the way he was. I think he should have been held accountable. And but there's a you know there's always a, a gray area in terms of how accountable someone should be held. What should their punishment be? How far should we go? And I would say that for black men, uh, for hundreds of years, this isn't just true. Now it's always been true. It's an American tradition. The the act of harming a white woman, even being accused of harming a white woman. Uh, has been a crime that black men are more severely punished for than white men are punished for. Doesn't mean that beating a white woman is ever acceptable, or beating any woman is ever acceptable. It doesn't mean that raping a woman is ever acceptable. We know that's not true. Or murdering a woman is ever acceptable. But and you look at most cases, when somebody rapes, beats, or murders a white woman, and he's black, he's going to get hung out to dry in a way that's very different from what tends to happen to white men because there are a lot of white guys in professional sports for example uh, and, and entertainment who've been accused of doing some pretty ugly stuff but uh, you don't see you might see the story on the front pages for three or four days but it doesn't become kind of this national phenomenon uh, with all this energy that you're seeing with the Cosby thing so that's all I really want to say I'm not sitting here trying to say Cosby's a good guy um, sometimes the politics of these conversations become so stupid that people will say, oh, well, you're defending Bill Cosby. Well, number one, I'm not really defending him. I don't, I don't, I told you, I don't like Cosby that much. But number two, uh, if you really want to look at technically, uh, in America, we live in a country that's technically supposed to give everyone a defense, a hearing in court, a chance to speak uh, their truth. Now, of course, our justice system is a joke. Um, it's even so bad that uh, I've known people who were falsely accused who were told that if you go into the courtroom and say you didn't do it, you'll get more time because they need you to go ahead and, and admit you did something. They need you to go ahead and tell the lie. right? They need you to go ahead and admit to something you didn't do. Um, you know, But in general, we're supposed to have a country where everyone technically gets a defense. They at least get their day in court. Um, and But you know, with Cosby, though, at the same time, he has to be held accountable for the fact that he hasn't really said anything since all this happened. Um, I know his lawyers probably advised him not to and honestly between us i kind of feel like you know this says something about his guilt or innocence i don't believe cosby is innocent i really don't um but you know uh, the thing is is he the only one in hollywood doing this kind of stuff you out of your damn mind if you think that i mean like i said those pedophile parties go go look it up go go search for that search for that term and read these read those articles and and you know and look at some of the crazy debauchery that's going on in hollywood uh the, the craziness the things that they're doing um you know it's it's absolutely crazy so uh, that's all I just want to say I'm Dr. Boyce Watkins from Your Black World and don't forget we have our Black Wealth Boot Camp starting up in the next um, uh, week on July 18th the response has been extraordinary I am so excited you'll get to talk to me in real time we'll talk about building black wealth investing uh, growing your business building your business you'll have a great vibrant community to interact with we're creating um, our own big black Wall Street that's what we're doing and, and we're well on our way we have hundreds of people that have signed up and we're going to get hundreds more and we're going to keep it moving we're really going to do this uh, because it's not just it's not just money. It's a movement. Well, I'm Dr. Boyce Watkins from Your Black World. Please take care. God bless. I'm gone. Peace.